Hello everyone. So welcome to the next part in the series of Ajax based lectures. So the second part that we are going to focus on in here is about SPA, which is single page architecture. Before we understand what single page architecture uh, means, let's go to how we understand how the web works currently. Okay, so this is usually referred to as the traditional web architecture. So if you look at this, we have a client and we have a server. The client, which is you, which is you open a browser, you are, you become the client. And from the client, you open the browser and you start typing in a, an address that you want to go to. As you type in the address, you make, you, once you press enter, what happens is a request is sent from the client to the server whichever the server you are trying to connect, google.com or kfu.edu.sa and whatever. So it goes to the server and sees if it can find the page that you have requested. Once it has found the page that you have requested, it comes back with you, uh, to you with the page itself. Okay. Uh, and again, while you are using the page, you find a link that you're interested in and you click on that link. And as soon as you click on the link, again, the page, the browser makes a request to the server and that new page is again sent back to you, to the client, okay? So what happens over here is, uh, as soon as you make the second request, everything is requested. So you have to again make a new request, establish a new connection, and then move all the resources for that new page. So this is how traditionally a web page works, okay? So what we are going to see is, each request from the browser requires a complete new page because it, it, it's, it's a new request. So a new page comes in. But the problem is an HTML page is not just one page. It's not one request. It comes with many things inside it. As you have learned before, that a single page can have CSS for styles. It can have JavaScript for interaction. It can have font files if the font is unique, which is not available on the web. It can have image files, which are needed to show a page, and other files if needed, like video files or uh, uh, other data files that are needed. Okay, We will see an example of how many files a traditional, a simple web page might look like. Okay? And each request needs to be needs to have its own response. So it doesn't depend on the previous response. As soon as you make a request, a new response comes back uh, to you, okay? So it be sometimes this may become unnecessary because some parts of the page always remain the same. Let's go back to a demo. So let's open the KFU page, which is, let's say, kfu.edu.sa. And in this page, what we are going to see is how, how when we make a request, what are the different types of uh, files come along with this page, with this one HTML page that we have requested. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on here and say inspect element. And inside this, I have a tab called network tab. Inside this tab, um, let's refresh this page because we can see the timeline of over here. You can see the timeline of how the pages are requested. And you can see that this is the first page that was requested, the home. The home was the first page that was requested. Now in this home page, but this is not the only page. As you can see, that pa the, the page is full of resources. There are, jab there are there is you know image files. There is you can see there is JavaScript files written over here. There is CSS files written over here. So and there is font files as well. So as I mentioned earlier, a single page is not just one page. It depends upon a lot of assets. These are all the resources that are needed to show the page because the page you can see over here has a lot of things, logo files, you know, image files. It has uh, fonts files to show some part of the text which is not traditional and many other things. So a single page will require a lot of resources. And if these resources are heavy, sometimes these resources may take a longer time to load. Okay. And sometimes they are faster. Sometimes. So uh, it takes time to load all of these resources one by one. Sometimes they are in parallel. As you can see, these are all in parallel because they are requested at the same time. Sometimes you have to wait until they finish because you see these ones are starting later on. So they have to wait until the, the first part of the page is loaded. So you get the idea that, that in a traditional page architecture, whenever you make a request, all of these files are sent to the browser before it can be shown to you. And while you are doing this, let's say, for example, while I'm doing this, I go to a specific link on the page. And if I go to a specific link on the page, now what I'm seeing is I see a completely new page, right? So if you look at the resources that are sent, all of these resources are sent back again. 
So the problem here is it's fine. We can see the resources. We can see the page loaded instantly because the network is fast. But the issue over here is you can see that the top part of the page, you see this part, which is the logo and some, some icons over here. All of these parts are sent back again, which is unnecessary because these parts were already there in my browser. So why did I, because you can see over here, I'll show you these parts were sent again. See this logo? This was before there before in the previous page. And when I made a new request, this, this image was again sent back. And this image took almost like around 30, 367 milliseconds uh, based on a fast internet connection. So imagine if you're working on a slower internet connection or a throttled internet connection, you will wait for some kind of seconds and the overall time would increase. The response time is very important. So what we are seeing over here is that sometimes these pages are loaded where some of the items remain the same, but still the whole page is loaded and this will waste a lot of resources. Okay, so like the example I gave you just now. So this was the previous example I gave you. We have the header part of the page which will remain the same when you change the pages but still they are loaded again. So in a traditional page architecture, you're actually making a request and the response is a complete page with all its resources again and again. So even if you have this resource loaded in your page, just one request before, you're going to reload it again, re-request it again and get it from the, get it from the server uh, and it's shown again in the browser. So it's not cached, it's not saved in your, in your browser. Okay. So here, what web, practitioners did. So they found that this is a problem and this must be solved because not everyone has a very fast internet connection or you may be using a mobile phone or you may be using a data connection which is on a 4G connection or 3G connection on a mobile phone which will cost you more money. So you have a set bandwidth on the monthly quota or weekly quota whatever internet connection you're using. So you don't want to waste your resources by going to a page and re-downloading the resources again and again, same resources again by wasting a lot, a lot of your bandwidth. So what do you do? So what they did was they came up with a new architecture which was called single page architecture. So what is a single page architecture? In a single page architecture, the apps that work inside the browser do not need reloading of the page. So not the, everything inside the page is not reloaded at the same time. Examples of these are Google, Gmail, you know, Twitter and LinkedIn. I'm going to show you an example of LinkedIn in a little while of how it is, how it is done. And after the initial page is loaded, then the only thing that is transferred between the server and the client is data. They do not exchange resources. They do not exchange any assets. Okay, there might be some assets like images downloaded based on that, but most of the time this is only data that is exchanged between the server and the client. So this is how a traditional, a single page architecture looks like. So again, we have a client and we have a server. Initially, the first request that is made comes back with a complete HTML page with all the assets, you know, with all the CSS files, JavaScript files, the image files that are needed for the first time. And then, the next time you click on a page or any event happens, it makes a request, but this time you're not requesting a complete page. This time you're requesting data only. So the size of the data, as you will see, is in bytes. It's not, it's not in kilobytes, it's not in megabytes, it's in bytes. Okay, and this one, this one, this is the data that is exchanged and this will be of smaller size and hence your page will be faster. Okay, so before we go into the advantages of this, let's let's look at let's look at how it works. So I'm going to open LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a, is, is a page where it's a single page architecture where you have a single page and you have a list of posts in that page, right? And you as you move on, these uh, these pages are loaded. So the first time I, I load this page, let me refresh the page, and I'm going to show you that in this page you see a lot of resources have been loaded. The first time I have loaded the page. This will be, you know, images, the JavaScript files, and all these things that are needed to load the page. Okay. Now, there is a part over here in the top, as you can see, there is a part called XHR. XHR means those things that are requested asynchronously. You will learn that one thing that makes it possible for us to exchange data between the server and the client asynchronously, which is data only. Not I'm not asking for a complete new request. I'm asking for an asynchronous request while I'm doing it. So. What we will do is I'm going to press XHR. You can see that these are all the files that are requested after the page was loaded. And this is only data files. 
Okay, these are only data files. You can see that these files are in bytes. Some of them are images, profile pages, and these kind of things, which are which are which are more than the other ones. But most of the time, these are data. So let's let's see how it works. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to cancel all of these things so that we can see how when when I'm on this page, this is empty, right? So I'm going back to my page and I start scrolling. As soon as I start scrolling, the page starts to make requests again while I am on the page itself. And these requests are XHR requests. It's not refreshing the page. It's not getting a new resource again. It's, it's only getting the data that is needed to show me my updated stories. And you see these are in bytes. Some of them are in kilobytes and these are all two kilobytes or 1.45 kilobytes. These are very small. These are all data files that are needed to be. And all of these data files, you would be, for example, let's let's say, these are all JSON files. We just studied this. If you remember, the JSON file starts with, uh, start with uh, parentheses, and inside that you have some key and value pairs, and it can be an array of objects. So what is exchanged between the server and the client in a single page architecture is data. And this data will tell them this is the this is the file, this is the value that you need to show, this is the width and the height of the image that is attached to the story, whatever. So this is how these pages remain fast. They don't exchange a lot of media files because they know that the header and the footer and the left hand side and the right hand side always are the same. So why do you go on and request them again, wasting your bandwidth? So this is why, for example, if you're using Twitter on your phone or using LinkedIn on your phone, or using uh, Gmail, or whatever applications on your phone, these applications make an asynchronous request for data only. They do not request for the entire page again, because they already have the styles there. They already have the JavaScript files there. So there's no need of requesting them again, because you're still on the same website. Okay. What are the, so the advantages, as I have mentioned earlier, the first advantage is it's, it's fast. It's responsive because most of the resources are loaded in the first one. You can see the highlighted on the screen. When the first request is made, you get the HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and media. And then after that, subsequent request will receive only data. You will not receive all these files again and again. This will, this will increase the speed and the response time of your page. Uh, the second advantage is adaptability. The same code, because you're sending only data, can be used with any type of client that you're using. It can be your mobile application or it can be a web application. So it doesn't differentiate because you're exchanging data only. The UI part, the interface part of how the data is shown is already inside the client. So this is how, it, so as you can see, the, the third, the fourth advantage, ability to separate data and UI. So you are getting the data, then that data is shown based on whichever UI you are using. It could be a mobile phone, it could be a watch, it could be a tablet, it could be an iPad. So it depends on the type of device that you're using. Okay. Uh, it also has support for offline data caching because you are receiving data only. So what it does, it receives the data and it caches the data so that when you, suppose the internet connection goes off, the data is still there in your, in your browser, in your, in your application. Okay, so these are the advantage of using a single page architecture. In the next in the next uh, part of the series, what we are going to do is we are going to understand of how we are going to implement this single page architecture. And that is accomplished by using Ajax.